For this video, I want to show you how to use the law of sines to solve a triangle. This is known as the ambiguous case because we are given two sides and a non-included angle. This in geometry is one of the relationships that if you are given does not prove triangle congruence because of the fact that sometimes when you are given two sides and a non-included angle, you have no triangles that can be formed, or you could possibly have just one triangle that could be formed, or it is also possible that you could have two triangles be formed. So we are going to solve this triangle for the missing information. So we're missing angle B, angle C, and side C. So those are the things that we want to find. So when we are setting this up, it doesn't matter how you draw your triangle. I always recommend drawing a picture and labeling it with the information that you know so that you can set up your relationship with law of signs easily. I'm going to start by finding angle B. So to do that, I'm going to use sine of angle B over the side opposite of B, which is 31 equals sine of angle A, so in this case A is 20 degrees, over the side opposite of A, which is 12. So it's always sine of an angle over its opposite side is the relationship, and it doesn't matter which of the three you use as long as you stay consistent with the angle and the side opposite. All right, so what we want to do is we want to find angle B. So to do that, I want to get B by itself. The first thing I need to do is move the 31 to the other side by multiplying. So I have 31 times sine 20 over 12. And then because I'm looking for an angle, I'm going to do the inverse sine of that value. So it's best to just plug this all into your calculator all at once. That way you aren't doing any rounding because if you round and then solve and you round again, it makes your answer less accurate. So I'm going to plug this into my graphing calculator. You can use any kind of scientific calculator that has sine in it. You do want to make sure that your mode is set in degrees and not radians. You will get the wrong answer if you are in radians. So make sure that whatever calculator you are using, that it is set in degree mode. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the angle B by doing second sine 31 sine 20. Make sure you close your parentheses behind sine 20 because you will get the wrong answer if you forget to do that. Divided by 12 and we get 62.07 degrees. So we know for sure that there's at least one triangle that can be formed because we got an answer here. If I got an error in my calculator because this part right here was greater than one, then we would have no solutions in those. The given information does not actually solve a triangle. All right, so this is why it's known as the ambiguous case because we have to see, can I form a second triangle? Okay, so you always want to, after you've found your first angle measure, we want to see if it's possible to find a second triangle. And basically what we need to do is we need to find the supplement of the angle that we just found. So I want to find the supplement of B. And the reason for this is the sine of any angle is equal to the sine of its supplement. So there are two possible angles that could give you the same value for sine. So you want to make sure that when you are setting up this relationship, that you check to see if you can have, if the supplementary angle would form another triangle. Okay, so to find the supplement of B, we would do 180 minus 62.07, and we end up with 117.93 degrees. Now what we have to do is take the relationship that we were given. So we were given that A is 20 degrees. Okay, so we were given A is 20 degrees plus 117 degrees. This has to be less than 180. If the sum is less than 180, you're basically asking yourself, is it less than 180? If it is, then I can find a third angle that would make it a triangle. OK, 
Okay, so if we add this together, we end up with 137.93, which is less than 180. So that tells me that our first angle measure for B is 62.07. So the first triangle that I can form has an angle measure of 62.07. Okay, and that tells us that we have to find angle C1, and we also have to find side C1. Okay, so I'm gonna just put a little one on this to represent the first triangle. Okay, our second triangle that can be formed, if I draw it in the same manner where I have the A at the bottom, and sorry, I'm writing the angle measure, that's where the two came from, a goes here, and this is 20 degrees. What's going to happen is that side that's the same length, so, and I know my drawings are not to scale, but this side, A equals 12, could also be here. So this is going to be angle B2, which is 117. 0.93. So we have to find angle C2, and we also have to find side C1. This side is not going to change because we were given that this side is 31. So this side is still the same. The A is 20 is still the same. The A equals 12 is still the same. But what changes is the fact that there's two triangles that can be formed from this given relationship, which is why congruence can't be proven in geometry. All right, so let's come back up here and solve the first triangle. So we're gonna find angle C1 first. So angle C1, we would just take the fact that we have to do 180 plus the different, or sorry, not plus, 180 minus, we've been doing this for too long, all right, 180 minus the sum of 62.07, because remember that's this angle here, plus 20 degrees. So the first angle that we can form for angle C1, the first triangle, would be having angle C as 97.93 degrees. Okay. To find the side C1, we are going to use the given relationship, the 12 and the sine 20, to help us. So we are going to take C1, and this is side C1, over sine of the angle that we just found, 97.93, and set it equal to side A, which is 12, over sine of 20. And the only reason I did this was so that the answer that I was looking for would be on the top. I could have set it up the same way, but then my C1 would have been in the denominator. And I find that it's easier to solve if I have it on top, okay? So what I would do is I would just plug into my calculator 12 times sine of 97.93, make sure that this is in parentheses, divided by sine 20. And for time's sake, I'm just going to tell you what I got when I plugged it into my calculator. So for this one, I ended up with 34.75. Okay, and it makes sense that in this particular triangle that was formed, that C1, since it's opposite of the largest angle of 97.93 degrees, would be the longest side. Okay, so we solved the first triangle. Now we have to remember that we have the second triangle that we have to solve. So we now have to find, we already found B2, so we need to find C2, and we have to find C1. So we remember that we already found the second angle that could work for B2, which was 117.93. Okay, so let's start by finding angle C2. So to find angle C2, what we would do is the same thing that we did to find C1. We would take 180 degrees minus the sum of the 117.93 and the 20. Or because we had already done that, we could have just done 180 minus 137.93. And when we do this, we end up with approximately 42.07 
degrees. So we can say that the second angle measure for C2 is 42.07 degrees. All right, one last thing to find. I know that this is a long process. The last thing that we need to find is C1. So again, we would put C1 over sine of 42.07. And we're going to use the given relationship. So we're gonna use little a and big A since those were both given to us. And we would just say that 12 over sine of 20. Now to find C1, we would just take and multiply both sides by sine 42.07. And again, we would plug this into our calculator. So um, in case, since I didn't show how to do it on the last one, I'll just quickly show you. We would just do 12 sine 42.07, close the parentheses, divided by sine of 20 and hit enter and we get 23.51 degrees. I mean, not degrees, sorry, this is a side of the relationship, 23.51. So C1 ends up being 23.51. And I put C1 again, didn't I? Let me change that, that should say C2, C2, C2. Okay, so we found side C2 angle C2 and angle B2. This is the hardest case for the law of sines because of the fact that you can have two triangles that are formed. So you have to be really, really careful with law of sines. For no solution, this part right here has to be greater than one. So if this part right here is greater than one, there's no solution, okay? Um, if this part right here is greater than 180 degrees, then there's only one triangle that works. And if it's less than 180 degrees, that's when we have the two triangles that can be formed. And so we have to go back through and solve for all of the different angles and side measures that could happen. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for struggling through with me on my few little mistakes that I made. It's very hard to make a long video without mistakes. If you have any questions or additional topics that you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.